So part two of our work on probability today. What we're going to do, pick up where we finished off last week. So we're going to just revisit binomial expansion by Pascal's triangle. The binomial series, so that there's the formal formula method of um, expanding a binomial. We're going to have a look at the binomial distribution and look at the binomial distribution as used in a in a kind of industrial ex inspection situation. All right. So, uh, binomial expression, binomial series. One which contains two terms connected by a plus or a minus sign. Examples include brackets P plus Q, brackets A plus X all squared, brackets 2X plus Y all to the power 3. We expand, expand an, an expression like AX to the N for integer values of N from 0 to 6 gives the results there. So a plus x to the 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. ax to the power of 1, a plus x to the power of 1 is a plus x. So the coefficients there are 1. 1 times a, 1 times x. If we expand the a plus x squared, we get a squared plus 2ax plus x squared. Again, the coefficients here on the outside, you don't normally write them, but remember there's always a 1 in front there. If we carry on doing that, we get this triangle effect, and it's called the Pascal Triangle. So, some facts about that. From these results, table 1, the following paths emerge. A decreases in power from left to right. If we look at this one down there, A to the 5, we've got 5, A, we've got A to the 5, A to the 4, A to the 3, A to the 2, and so on. So they decrease as we go from left to right. Powers of x increase from left to right. So we've got no powers of x. Oh, sorry, we've got a, a single power of x here. x to the 2, x to the 3, x to the 4, x to the 5. The powers on the end are always the same. Then the coefficients of each term in this expansion are symmetrical around the middle coefficient when n is even and symmetrical among the middle two when n is odd. So if we look at n being even, 4, symmetrical, we've got 6 in the middle, 4 either side. If we look where it's odd, we've got two coefficients in the middle that are 10. So the symmetrical down the centre. Right. Coefficients shown separately in table 2 known as Pascal's triangle. So if you want to find the one underneath, you add the two above together, gives you that you can easily work out the next line. And it would be okay, and it would be a feasible method to do that for um, expansions up to the um, values of n of around 10. Beyond that, the table would get a bit, the, the triangle would get a bit big and unwieldy. Okay. So that's um, the uh, Pascal's triangle. It's a method of expanding expressions that look like those there, binomial expressions. So, if we look at the expansion of a plus x to the 7, we can extend Pascal's triangle from the power of 6 to 7 by adding the numbers up in the previous column. So here's our coefficients. As we work from left to right, and then the expansion would be we're going to start off with a to the 7, and that we know that the index of a is going to decrease each time as we go from left to right. The index of x is going to increase as we go from left to right. And we take the, um, from left to right, the coefficients in Pascal's triangle and write them in front. So we've got 1 for the a to the 7. We've got 7a to the 6x, 21a to the 5x squared, and so on as we go from left to right. Yep. So uh, if we need to expand a binomial to a power, then we can use one way we can do that is to use Pascal's triangle.
So, let's have a look together at a problem determined by Pascal's triangle. Look at the method. The expansion of 2p minus 3q to the power of 5. So if we compare those two, if we compare 2p minus 3q to um, power of 5, and compare that to um, a plus x to the 5, we could say that a is equal to 2p, and we can say that um, <coughs> x is equal to minus 3q. Yeah. And from Pascal's triangle, we can write that the, the, the a plus x to the 5 is equal to what we know as a to the 5. And then we've got 5 as the next coefficient. a to the 4. Uh, x. The next one is plus 10. Must be a to the 3 x squared, and then we've got to go. We know it's symmetrical, so it must be 5 again plus 5 uh, a to the 2 x to the 3 plus. Then I x the squared. That's another ten in there. Because that's a because uh, um, n is odd. So that's ten I two x to the three plus five I x to the four. So that's the expansion. <laughs> yeah. So what we need to do is take that expansion and everywhere we see A, write in 2P instead. And everywhere where we see X, we write in minus 3Q instead. Alright. So starting that off is we could say hence. 2p minus 3q to the 5 equals. We've got a to the 5, so we want 2p to the 5 plus 5 times 2p to the 4. Minus 3q. I'm going to start writing these on a separate line. Plus 10. 2p to the 3. Minus 3q to the 2. Plus 10. 2p to the 2. Minus 3q to the 3 plus 5 2p to the 3 minus 3q to the 4 plus minus 3q to the 5. In longhand, that's what that is. And then what we can do is bring together all the constants. So if we take um, here, we can bring together 5, 2, and minus 3 by expanding that expression. <laughs> so we've got 
2p to the 4, how could we write that? Take this one, this one thing out over here. Five. We've got five times two p to the power four times minus three q to the power one. What's how? How can we write expand that? Where the ten come from? Okay, let's see where you're going, but like that. Just that. What's two p to the four? How else could we write that? Where does 16 come from? Yeah, so we can write it as 2 to the 4 times p to the 4. Yeah. We've got to have p to the 4 as well. What you've got P to the one here. And the rules of indices are if we've got one power raised to another power, we multiply. So you must have yes you've got two to the four there, but you also got to keep the key to the power well. And then what we got here? Times minus three times q. So now we can bring all those constants together. Five times two to the four, which totally rightly says is sixteen, times minus three, and then we keep p to the four and the q. So what is five times sixteen times? Minus three. Bearing in mind that we've already got we've got two p to the five here, so what's two to the five? We haven't done this one. Must be thirty two, mustn't it? Thirty two p to the five is that first bit. Yeah. And then we got five times two to the four times minus three minus two hundred and forty did you say? Right, and we got P to the four Q to the uh, one, yeah. So here again we've got ten, we've got two to the three, and we've got minus three to the power of two. So what's the constant we need to put in front? We need to do um, 2 to the 3 times the 10 in front times 2 to the 3 times minus 3 to the power of 2. We've got to keep the Q. We've got to keep the P. Power three. So we've got ten times two to the three times minus three to the power of two. Uh,
we got 10 times 2 to the 3 times minus 3 to the 2. Because we're on the air. So P to the 3 starts. It goes to get rid of those brackets. You have to do 2 to the power of 3 times P to the power of 3. Let me write this out again. Right? If we're going to expand these brackets out, we've got to do 10 times 2 to the 3 times P to the 3 then times minus 3 to the 2. I've been careful about putting them in brackets because if you don't do that on your calculator, you'll get the wrong answer. Um, and times um, Q to the 2. So we want to bring together these three constants. 10 times 2 to the 3 times minus 3 to the 2. Seven hundred and twenty plus, yeah. So that'll be p to the three, q to the two. Finish it off. So we've got to bring do that one, that one, and that one. So expand them. 2p minus 3q to the 5, we compare that with a plus x to the 5, we say that a is equal to 2p and x is equal to minus 3q, we then get the expansion of ax to the 5, and we write in everywhere we see a, we write in 2p, everywhere where we see q, we write in, everywhere we see x, sorry, we write in minus 3q. We then get an expression, so we can use the um, Pascal's triangle. We write the expressions out in all our terms, and then expand any brackets so that we get one constant in front of each term in the series. Okay, so that's just a general expansion of a binomial um, expression. What we're really interested in is how does that come into probability. Right, so that's what we're going to look at now. So, formula method. First, formula method, binomial expansion. So the binomial series, or binomial theorem, is a formula for raising binomial expression to any power without lengthy multiplication. The general expansion of AX to the N is given by AX to the N is equal to, and then you can see um, we've got A to the N, A to the N minus 1. As we go through these, we're roughly taking 1 off the, the um, index of A, and we're at 1 index of N. Uh, index of x. So the red highlights there, but the items highlighted in red show where the coefficients of each term in the expansion come from. So the coefficients on the outside we know are always 1, and then it goes to n, and then it goes to n times n minus 1 of a 2 factorial. Remember what 2 factorial is? It's all the numbers up to that number multiplied by each other. You've got a factorial button on your calculator. Second term, and then we can do that for any number of terms to the value of n. Okay. So, if we look on the um, lower down your page on the next slide for me, if we look at how that um, expand an a plus 4 to x to the 4, okay, I put all the numbers in so we know the, the uh, first um, coefficient is 1, then we put in n, 
and as four in this case. Okay. Then we put in n times n minus one on the top line over two factorial. and so on through each of the terms and then we simplify those so I've, I've taken that to a stage where I've simplified um, the top 4 times 3 and 1 times 2 and done that for each expansion and then when we solve those together we come with 1, 4, 6, four, 1 we can compare that with the Pascal's triangle and see that they are the same yeah. So again, that w we can we can look at any um, binomial expansion, and if we know which term we want to know, we can use that formula, part of that binomial series formula, to find the coefficient. All right. So that's the theory. Now, what about the um, binomial distribution and probability? In, in terms of binomial um, expressions. So the binomial distribution deals with two numbers only. These being, first the probability that an event will happen, P, and then the probability that, uh, that an event will not happen, Q. Now that seems that should seem fairly obvious that if we if, if when a coin is tossed, P is the probability that it'll be heads up, and Q is the probability that it'll land tail up, i.e. not head up, it should be remembered that P plus Q is always equal to 1. So you add up all the probabilities. In this case, we've only got two options. That's what binomial means. There are only two options in each try. Then um, they must both add up to 1. But, but we think in terms of P being the probability that something will happen and Q being the probability that it won't. Yeah. It's the same thing as saying that P is the probability of heads and Q is the probability of tails. But that's the way I spoke about is probability that will happen, probability that it will not happen. All right? A binomial distribution can be used for finding um, the probability of getting three heads in seven tosses of a coin. Or an industry for determining defect rates as the result of sampling. So you want to um, sample and predict how many faulty components you've got in a batch. Okay. One way of defining binomial distribution is as follows. If P is the probability of an event happening, and Q is the probability that it will not happen, then the probability is that it, the, the event will happen 0, 1, 2, 3 to n times in n trials are given by the values of the excessive terms in the expansion Q plus P to the n. Note Q is first, P is second in that in that binomial there. So n is the number of tries, the number of times you're going to cough, toss the coin and see how many heads you're going to get. And a probability of getting two or three or four heads are the um, coefficients in the, in the series. Okay? So we've got this binomial expansion for um, q plus p to the n. So we can write um, the formula in terms of P and Q using the binomial expansion from earlier. Alright? So, let's have a look at um, an actual problem and using this. Determine the probabilities of having A, at least one girl, and B, at least one girl and one boy, in a family of four children, assuming equal probability of male and female birth. Okay, so 
what's the value of P in this case and what's the value of Q? Probability equal probability of male and female birth. Remembering that P plus Q has got to equal 1. So what's the probability of a male? What's the probability of a female? If, they've got, if it's got to be equal, they must be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. What's N in this example? Yeah. Okay. So, probabilities of um, zero, one, two, three, four girls are given And the expansion of Q plus P to the 4. Alright? Now, using um, either the uh, Pascal's triangle method or the formula, what's the expansion of Q plus P to the 4? We know we must start with a Q to the 4 term. Looking at your Pascal's triangle, find your Pascal's triangle, what are the coefficients the terms? So we, we must have a plus 4, Q to the 3, Yeah. We must have a Q to the two P squared. As we know the the index of Q reduces as we go from left to right, the index of P increases as we go from left to right. Yeah, for one for one chance, right? But in four children, there's four chances. So we add this four. And then we've got four Q P cubed plus P to the four. Why is it what? <coughs> we always know we've got this term to the power of n on the left hand side with the coefficient of 1. Yeah. We could if we want to write p to the 0 in there but we don't bother. p to the 0 is 1 so that's the same. The coefficient Remember the rules of the expansion. The index of, I, of um, Q, in this case, reduces by 1 as we go from left to right. So I've gone Q to the 4, Q to the 3, Q to the 2, Q to the 1. No Q at all. Right? And the index of P 
increases as we go from left to right. One, peak of the one, peak of the two, peak of the three, and then on peak of the four. Yeah? Alright, and then these numbers come from either the Pascal's triangle or the red bits in that formula that I've given you. Each of the successive terms. Yeah? Okay? So, what we can say of that expansion is, remembering that Q is 0.5 and um, P is 0.5 as well. But what's Q to the 4 the probability of? Yeah, this one is no girls. What about this one? One girl. four girls on the end. Yep. So what we looking for in part A we're looking for the probability of at least one girl. can't have no girls because that won't be but any any one of these probabilities satisfy at least one girl don't they yeah so it's effectively that one 4q to the 3 p to the 1 plus 6q squared P squared plus 4Q P to the 3 plus P to the 4. So we we'll replace Q and P with 0.5. Yeah, because you're looking for at least one girl. Because it's at least, you're going to add all, all, the, all the options that give you at least one girl, you're going to add together to get the... Effectively, you're looking for the probability of, of um, one boy, aren't you? Uh, maybe not. Not the, not the probability. Or if you're looking for. Alright. So well, anyway, what you've got to do is put in 0.5 for Q and P. So that's equal to 4 times 0.5 to the 3 times 0.5 plus 6 times 0.5 squared plus 0.5 squared, sorry, times 0.5 squared, plus 4 times 0.5 times 0.5 to the 3 plus 0.5 to the 4. There. That's times, that is. I should leave that out, really.
Yeah. That was one for a problem. Huh? Times, But the probabilities of but the probabilities of there being two is not the same as the probability of one. Yeah. If you if you work out the individual probabilities, you get the same on the ends because they're both 0.5 to the four. I can see where you're looking, but that don't work like that because the probabilities of each term are not the same. brackets if you want. Still the same. Oh yeah, stick it in there and then you'll be sure. That's that turn. That's that term. Ah, oh, a bit confusing. That's that term. And that's the term underneath. That's a bit confusing, I don't know if I should. There's all the, all the probabilities that include at least one girl added together. Is there another way you could get to that? not one minus the probability of four boys because the only option we haven't added out of, the, out, of the, out of all the terms is the one on one for no girls so if we take that probability keep to the four off one do we get the same Do one minus point five to the power four. Yeah, point five to the four zero six two five. So one is that is three seven five. But it's important to know, right, that 
that that way that might there might not always be an, a, another easier option. But well, if if you were talking about at least two girls, then you you'd be leaving a lot more options out, wouldn't you? It's going to be either those three options added together, or one minus those two options. But there is two ways to go about. That. Okay, using the second method, probability of at least one boy and one girl has to be one minus q to the four plus p to the four. That is one minus. 0.5 to the 4 plus 0.5 to the 4 and it equals 0.875 Yep Equally, you could, have, you could add three middle terms together these three We could um, equally add those three terms together. Does anybody not get this now? Yeah? So, let's have a look then at how we might consider this in our industrial inspection situation. Binomial distribution used in industrial inspection. Industrial, in industrial inspection, used as the probability that a component is defective and two the probability that a component is satisfactory. In this case the binomial distribution can be defined as the probability that an event will happen 0, 1, 2, 3 for n components is drawn at random from a large batch of components given by the value of the successive terms of expansion Q plus P to the N. So we can use this in expansion to look at failure rates in components, for instance. So we'll have a look at an example in that context. And in your assignment, if you're going to get one of these, that's going to be in, a, in an engineering context like this. Not babies. Not coin tosses. Not numbers on a dice. All right? So, problem. A machine is producing a large number of bolts automatically. In a box of these bolts, 95% are within the allowable tolerance, 95% are good, with respect to diameter, the remaining, the remainder being outside of the diameter tolerance values. Seven bolts are drawn at random from the box. Determine the probabilities that A2 and B more than two of the seven bolts are outside of the diameter tolerance values. Okay, so in this case, what are the values of P, Q, and N? Yeah, N is the number that we draw on from the sample. So that's 7. P is um, the probability that the bolts are outside the allowable tolerance. So that's 0 0.05. Therefore Q is 0 0.95. Yeah, so the percentage as a decimal. Are you all comfortable with that easy conversion of percentages? That's me. Yeah. Hopefully. Alright. So, how can we get the um, 
probability of two and more two for seven volts outside the tank. What do we need to do? What we need to look at <laughs> the expansion of Q plus P to the seventh. Sum up there for the video. In this problem, we've got P is the probability that faulty, 0.05, Q is the probability that's is good, 0.95, and N is the number of items we're drawing from the batch. Yeah. So we need it to use the expansion of Q plus P to the 7. We calculate zero defective as Q to the 7. How many one defective? Probability of two defective. And that was the answer we were looking for. The probability of two defective is 0 0.0406. Then we wanted the probability of more than two. So we've done all the options that don't include two defective. Therefore, if we take those three off the total one, we can find the probability that at least two will be defective from a draw of seven items. And that would be the same as adding the remaining four terms of the expansion. So you can do it either way. Right. So in your um, handouts, there are some further problems on Pascal's triangle, expanded binomials, and binomial distribution. You've got concrete blocks at the time. Okay, so rest of the session have a go at them and I'm just going to have a look at um, see if we can do as a way you can do this by Excel I believe. So I'm going to have a look at that so if I can show you. In your assignment it's likely you're going to be asked to show that you can do it for manual like Alright. And understand how it works. All right.